Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to discuss economic trends such as inflation and deflation and what that means when it comes to accounting for your inventory cost flows. All right, so here I have a, a basic Y and X axis set up for you. Notice on my Y axis, I have price. On my X axis, I have time, okay? With time going this way, price getting higher going that way. Economic trends. So over time, there tend to be periods where economic prices are trending higher or trending lower, okay? So prices of consumer goods, basically going up, going down. When prices of consumer goods are going up, we call that inflation. So that would be resembled by an arrow like this on the graph, right? We start off at a lower price and over time we grow to a higher price. That's inflationary. On the other hand, there will be times when prices tend to go down over time. That's known as deflation. And so that would have an arrow looking something like this. Okay, so in this case, my red arrow is inflation. My green arrow is deflation. Now, this is all economics. So what does this mean in terms of accounting and specifically accounting for inventory cost flows? Well, I'm going to throw specific identification out for a minute because specific identification um, doesn't really have a place here. This is more about the various cost flow assumptions companies make. And when I say assumptions, what I mean is FIFO, LIFO, and average cost. First in, first out, last in, first out, average cost. And I'm going to save average cost for last. I'm going to specifically focus on FIFO and LIFO to begin with. Now, FIFO by the name, first in, first out. What that means is the first inventory you purchased, so say inventory purchased over here, that is the first inventory that you sell. So that inventory becomes your cost of goods sold. All right. LIFO is a little bit different. Under LIFO, last in, first out. So last in, first out is the inventory you bought over here later in time. That's the first inventory you sell, or that is the LIFO cost of goods sold. Now notice here that let's just focus on inflation for a moment. If we're in a period of inflation, cost of goods sold under a FIFO system is way down there on the price chart cost of goods sold under a LIFO system is way up here on a price chart. That's a big gap. And so if you think about cost of goods sold, that's an expense on your income statement, which reduces your net income. What this basically tells us is that in an inflationary period, net income is going to be a lot lower if you're using LIFO as a company because you are incurring a higher cost of goods sold than a company that is using FIFO. Okay. But the opposite holds true in a deflationary period. In a deflationary period, FIFO cost is coming from way up there, high prices, whereas LIFO costs are coming from way down here, low prices. So again, if you think of cost of goods sold as a reduction on the income statement, as something that brings down net income, what this is essentially telling us is that in a deflationary period, LIFO has an advantage. LIFO is going to report higher net income than, say, a FIFO company who has that higher cost of goods sold. Okay, So this is how economic trends can end up impacting a company depending on whether or not they've made a, an assumption under, say, LIFO and FIFO. Now, I only talked about cost of goods sold, but remember, the, the, the other side of the coin of cost of goods sold is what's left over in your ending inventory, right? And so, in a FIFO system, because you are selling the early price stuff, your ending inventory is going to be made up of your higher priced stuff, your later priced stuff. So notice, in a inflationary period, right? In an inflationary period, even though FIFO has a low cost of goods sold, what that's going to end up doing is give them a high ending inventory balance on their balance sheet. And of course, LIFO is going to go through the opposite. LIFO's ending inventory balance is going to come from earlier in time. Right? 
its cost of goods sold is coming from later in time, its ending balance is coming from earlier in time. So again, if we just focus on inflation for a moment, right? LIFO COGS is super high under inflation, but LIFO ending balance is very low under inflation. And of course, vice versa for deflation, right? Under deflation, FIFO COGS is high, FIFO ending balance is low, LIFO COGS is low, LIFO ending balance is high, right? So this is, this is basically what happens as a result of economic trends. Now, a, a question I often get from students is, well, do companies try to game the system? Do they sw swap back and forth between FIFO and LIFO depending on what economic trend we're in? And they're not supposed to. And, and it would be kind of hard to do it because there's a cost to switching these systems. And there is also the notion of you should be consistent in the system you use from one year to another. And so if you try to switch without a valid reason beyond I'm just gaming the economics, um, you're going to get pushback, probably first from your auditor. And then if you make it through the auditor, maybe from regulators that are going to say, hey, wait a minute, you've used one system for years. Why are you suddenly switching? I want to know the, the business reason for doing it. Um, it. It'll look fishy, right? So So it's hard for customers to play that game. Now, I also mentioned that I would talk about average cost last. And notice I haven't brought up average cost yet. Well, average cost is actually a little less susceptible to these problems. Because average cost, by the way it just kind of weights the earlier prices and the later prices all together and just comes up with an average, it's always going to fall somewhere here in the middle. It's going to be less volatile to these economic trends. right? You might still fall here or here or say here or here. But notice that's not as extreme as falling to these outer points. Average cost is going to smooth out those economic trends and just draw the box in a little bit, a little bit tighter. Okay. And then, as I mentioned early on, just just worth bringing back up, specific identification wouldn't even be affected by any of this because in that situation, you're just you're 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 you know what you're selling, you know what price you paid for it. It doesn't matter how prices are trending. Um, you're always just recording. Hey. Uh, what did I pay for this thing I sold? You, you're specifically identifying everything. So that's not even relevant really for this chart. All right, that's it for how economic trends um, impacts uh, cost flow decisions. I uh, hope you found this helpful and I hope you join me for another video.